Two men talking about dresses. Total normal Friday night for us over here on the Cantina. The biography of a dress by Jamaica Kincaid. Let's talk about it today. But it's more than just a dress. <laughs> <laughs> so we start off with a narrator who's looking at a black and white uh, photo. Right, and she's looking at this, and she's looking at this yellow dress, and remembers the, the cotton poplin, and how the material came from England, and from this press over here, and she starts to kind of, like, recollect, but what's interesting about the story is the way she's constantly interjecting of, like, oh, there's no way I could have known that then, but I know now. <laughs> I love this story. It's very, very unique, and something that we don't see too often in stories, because it's hard to pull off for one because it can be very distracting, but it's not here because I think it's done elegantly, is that you have a narrator narrating on top of themselves, basically, where if you're reading this, there's parentheses all the way throughout is what Una's talking about that are interjecting afterthoughts into basically a story that's playing out when uh, a mother fabricated this picture of her and she's looking at this black and white picture remembering all of these things that were taking place and it's it's just really really cool um how it's done and perceived and i think without those parentheses thoughts in there this story wouldn't be as i think e powerful as it is what's well, it's consistent too right i mean literally the story is a narrator recollecting about the history of this picture this black and white picture and then there's this dress and we start talking about the history of that dress and where it came from and then even the narrator she it's a history of her and her mother and where she came from it's 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 a very tight story that is very thorough with this exploration of memories and knowledge and where we come from um, to, to your point about kind of like that dualistic feeling that kind of happens through that i wrote down one of these quotes that made you know you talking about it made me think about this it was then that was the first time that i separated myself from myself and I became two people, two small children then. I was two years old. One having the experience, the other observing the one having the experience. So even, even Kincaid herself as, as, as a writer is kind of specifically trying to explore this person having something happen to them and then the experience of looking back on it, on a memory. And our memory is what kind of creates and drafts these stories and creates the history of our lives. And we are very unreliable, as we've talked about so many times on this channel, as your memories are flawed and you make them probably a little bit more rose colored than they are. In, in this one, she is almost making excuses for her flawed memory of saying, oh, that, I, that's why it was this way, or maybe it was this way, or maybe it wasn't this way. I, I really don't know. And that's big of a person to admit that maybe your memory was flawed because that's scary because that's one of the things that a lot of people think of makes you who you are, are your memories of, of what you've done because that's what has made you who you are up to this point. Have you ever heard the term hermeneutics before? No, that's a new I one. Have, um, it's on my shelf back there. I have, I have a whole book on it and, and it's a fascinating study for something that is just a really fancy way too many you know s syllables for a word that basically just means like the study of meaning like how did something come to mean what it means to us to people to society those sorts of things and this is a story where this this young girl is almost exploring the hermeneutics of this memory of this dress where did this dress come from why does the color yellow matter like yellow pops up like all over Right, yeah, like and 50 that story. times. <laughs> well, and then there's that story when she's told the, you know, that she doesn't like porridge, right? Which is bringing in some of the poverty questions and wealth distribution questions where she's talking about like, oh, my mother told me this story about this man that ate nothing but this yellow porridge and his insides became yellow. Uh, he lived to be a hundred years old. I couldn't understand what a hundred or a lifetime meant to them, but I understand now. Like, it's a very interesting way to explore meaning of how yellow came to mean so much to this young girl. I wonder why yellow? Why did Kincaid pick that to be the color for the story? And when I think of yellow, I think of bright, I think of cheery, I think of positive. It seems to always be uplifting to me. Um, the sun is, is, is yellow, life-giving. And the mother gives the life to the little girl, 
she gives her everything, sacrifices for her, and the little girl's remembering, oh, I had this really expensive dress, and we were poor, and I was a really picky eater, but my mom made sure I had food to eat, even though we were poor. And so I, I felt like why yellow is that parents will do anything, they will sacrifice in order for their children to have a better life. And that yellow is that better life, that that life-givingness of parents to their children. And the yellow seemed to surround so much of the, I think you said the word surrounding and, and, and along those lines, like the, the lemon and the butter on the fish, right? So if we're giving nourishment to our child, like the yellow butter and the yellow lemon being put on it, you know, dressing it up and, and, and caring and nurturing for your child. When we talked about like that very unique experience of her getting her earpiece, remember it was like a yellow crusted color side, uh, but it was all meant to be kind of like dressing her up and giving her this gift of this picture for something that, you know, I think they even said like birthdays aren't even really celebrated, like she didn't care about it, but it, it's all about that nourishment, that giving, that that energy to your child almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then it, it starts to move into, uh, it, 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 the story then kind of breaks away from the economic point and maybe a little bit into like the racial point as she starts, you know, reminiscing on what does the picture represent? It's a, a moment frozen in time and it was supposed to be uh, a recreation of another picture that was seen, right? Um, but she didn't look like the little girl that she was supposed to be portraying. She looked different than her. And that kind of is a little bit heartbreaking as we move into that portion of the story. You're talking about like that um, the colorism where the girl that didn't have the yep. skin that was as dark and well, I mean, the eye color and the hair color. Yeah. But that is something that whether we like it or not, it exists, right? Like they talk about exactly. that. Yeah. And the reason for that, well, at least in this, this specific context is, is the idea of if you're outside in the sun, you're going to be darker skinned. And if you're outside working, then you're probably don't have as much money. Right. It was the princesses, particularly even in like Japan and stuff like that. Like the light skin meant that you didn't have a life of hard labor. You had a probably easier life, whether you're aristocracy or whether you were nobility and stuff like that. Uh, there, there's I don't know if I can separate like you said, uh, like we step away from the economics into 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 the racial aspects of things. I don't know if you can, because they're so tightly intertwined at times. Right. OK, fair enough, because. Because here's another thing to, to layer on top of that is, uh, did you pick up on any colonialism notes in the story? Oh, I did not. Do tell. Share, please. Well, there's there's a couple things, like the stores in terms of Murphy's, uh, what was it, Haney's. Uh, I, I need to look up the exact names, but you'll notice they were all English, Irish names, basically. Uh, she talks about the money being pulled out. It was English money at the time too. And the man had that nasty, ugly nose too. And even like the, the photographer at the end, do you remember his name? No, I don't. It's Mr. Walker. Right. And, and you have all okay. these people that, that don't pay attention to them. Right. The, the care, the love that her mother gave to her that she didn't even realize at the time, but it, it, they, they even have that comment where Mr. Walker would never have even like noticed her before but again you have all of this english influence in a sense too uh, talking about the money that kincaid clearly uh, i think uh is 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 drawing out some of those those un, like those feelings right uh the thread where'd the thread come from from england or france sorry yeah the it was manufactured it was manufactured in a french town and then brought yeah. to england and such uh, it's sold in an English store that that there's clearly a conversation here about that colonialism of those continents kind of taking over these small islands and, and populating them and, and such for a while. So I guess as we move through this story, it, it is also intertwined. And when you come back to the perspective of the mom trying to freeze this moment in time, is she freezing it for herself or is it she freezing it for her future daughter? And I think that the narrator is reflecting back upon that. And as she's doing so, we have another kind of theme emerge from this. And that's, you know, one's uh, quest for your own identity, right? Uh, who am I? Am I my parents? Is this narrator her mom? Is she a replica of her mother? Uh, is she supposed to be better than her mother? Her mother sacrificed so much for her to be this different person. 
this photograph represents a frozen moment in time of when she was innocent and she isn't the same person that she is. Does she live up to her mom's expectations? We don't know these things. So there's there's so much wrapped up in this very, very short story for this lady that's reflecting back on, you know, when she was two years old. Actually, I, my first memory is actually when I was two years old. It's it's just a really weird situation. I was at uh, one of my mom's friend's house with, with my mom. But but what I and I remember that only because of the photo, like like where I was. But I remember that what it was was I was sitting in this pool with my diapers on, and I'd stand up, and they weren't water diapers, so they just they just got massive, right? So I'd stand up and just, <laughs> whoop, just fell right off, right? And so I try to pull the diapers up, and I remember like it was so hard, it was so heavy. Like why was it so hard? And my mom's friend was actually a photographer to tie into the story, interestingly enough. Uh, and she took a photo of me sitting there like, and I'm like turning around with like, you know, my back's to the camera and my head's facing towards it. And I remember that feeling of just struggling with these diapers, trying to pull them up. And there wasn't much thought there. It was just like a feeling of, you know, just like the hot sun and, and confusion as to why these diapers were falling down. It was, it was, it's my first memory actually ever. Wow. That's really cool. Um, so see, that's the thing is, is that you have a picture to reflect back upon that memory is same in the story here because I think back to like my oldest memory and I was probably around four years old and there is no picture of it, but I do have a physical scar. Um, there's a tiny little scar on the side of my eye here. Uh, I was playing in a sandbox and a kid got mad at me and he hit me in the face with a board and it had a nail in it. And so like I have this scar and I have this pain and I have this vague memory of what happened when I was around four years old. And that's about as far back as I can go. So it feels like there's always something tying us to our past and our memory. Because I think without it, and maybe that's what I get out of the story is without those scars, without those pictures, without those memories, without that love, loss, whatever, what is your past? What is it? Does it matter? Does it define you? Does it make it who you are? Uh, or can it make you a better you? I think we admit that there's something unique about us, right? Because even in the story, she remembers how her mother had a specific smell. She didn't know what it was, but she knew it was her mother. It was unique, right? And, and I think that's true when you think about what is your wife? What is my wife? What is my son? There's just some unique essence to them. And you can try to trace back the heritage. You can try to pace, trace back these stories, but there's something um, that makes us us, and I think that these memories are part of that story. Yeah, I think from you move from your past to your present to your future, you see an evolution of yourself. And I think that I, I know maybe for a lack of better terms, your chi, your soul, your essence—that's who you are. Uh, and maybe you leave a little bit of that along the way as you move through. And something like a photo can freeze that in time and you can always go back to that. And that's why it's it's so magical and so important to capture those moments, just like the mom wanted to for the daughter. So she would always have that to go back on. Otherwise you might lose it. The biography of the yellow dress. Never thought I'd be here talking about a yellow dress <laughs> with my bro <laughs> on a Friday night. Thank you, Jamaica Kincaid. <laughs> <laughs> Great story. Let us know what you thought of it and your interpretations. Did you think yellow stood out for any particular reason? And did you think that the mother was caring for her child? Let us know in the comments down below. My name's been Una. Thanks for spending time with us today. Peace. Peace. <laughs>